Merry Christmas. Beginning in Proverbs, where did I, where did I find the idea for Sophia Wisdom in the in the, the storybook, the founding of the North Pole, right here in Proverbs, chapter three, starting at verse thirteen. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and clouds drop down the dew. From Proverbs, a description of wisdom in the feminine, which is why I named her Queen Sophia Wisdom. And we resume. Tialo sat there on that comfortable couch, dumbstruck, and looked out at wisdom's spectacular view. For a long time, neither one spoke, and then wisdom said, There is still an age yet to come, but I will not speak of that now. Come, Tiala, show me those pages and pages of nonsense you brought. Perhaps we can make something out of that, after all. Tiala reluctantly surrendered those pages and pages into wisdom's thoughtful hands. He had learned a lot more than he ever bargained for today, and wondered if any of this would have as wisdom had admonished him at the very first, unintended consequences. He was unaware that he had just exercised trust for the first time. Wisdom looked them over, chuckling to herself occasionally. At last she was finished. Not bad, little cherub. You certainly have a sense of humor. Tialo suddenly glowed with grateful amazement. She was going to help him. Now, first of all, place, said Sophia Wisdom, crinkling her brow. If we get that part right, everything else will just follow naturally. I know you like the idea of having him live somewhere far, far away from everybody. But southern India? If you like Tialo, there are far more remote places on the earth where nobody lives. Really? said Tiala. Where? <laughs> the polar ice caps, for example, replied Sophia Wisdom. Snow and ice year round. Perfect for a mythological character such as you propose. Which do you like better, South Pole or North Pole? North Pole, said Tiala thinking vaguely about the North Star Polaris, having something to do with direction and finding one's way back home. There we go, said Wisdom enthusiastically. Next, lose the hat. <laughs> A broad-brimmed hat is for the sun and warmer climates. This fellow has got to be warm and fuzzy now. Bit by bit, Wisdom methodically went through Tialo's pages, tweaking them into shape saying things like, ten feet tall? How are children going to find that approachable? Make him of average height and build. No, wait, wait, make him heavy. Heavy set. He's softer that way. Well, there he goes, skinny as a fence post, thought Tialo, but he trusted in wisdom's guidance. Now, said wisdom at one point, I know you like the idea of having him flying around on a magic carpet and all that influence from India, but he lives at the North Pole now. With all that snow and ice, a sleigh is more appropriate, don't you think? 
Tiala could see there was no stopping her now. And since he was getting far more than he ever hoped for, he said, there we go, with genuine glee. Up there at the North Pole, there are no oxen or horses or donkeys to draw such a thing, she reasoned. We'll have to think of something else. How about reindeer, posed Wisdom. Reindeer, said Tialo. What are they? Well, they are sort of a cross between a moose and a deer with antlers. They live up there in ice and snow. Besides, this whole thing is mythological anyway, no matter which way you slice it or dice it. We could make them fly easily enough, Tialo. How's that? <laughs> Inwardly, Tialo was jumping somersaults. That's terrific, he said, laughing. Good, said Wisdom, and there's room in the back for cargo. Cargo? asked Tialo. All those toys and gifts said Wisdom, winking. Oh, said Tialo. That reminds me, said Sophia Wisdom. All those toys and gifts have to be made. We'll make him a toy maker, give him a workshop, something to do, professionally, that is. But he can't do it all alone, by himself. Come on, Tialo, work with me here. How about angels like we have here, asked Tialo. Well, that's a bit much, Tialo, said Wisdom. But you've got the right idea there. Since all this is ever going to be anyway is a scaled-down miniature of heaven. Hmm. Let's see. We could use elves, perhaps. Elves, said Tialo. You mean those mischievous little spirits? They cause trouble enough, O Queen. Wouldn't that be a mistake? Not necessarily, no, said Queen Sophia. We could straighten them out, make them good little elves for our purposes. What do you think? Okay, said Tialo. And so it went all that afternoon, with Wisdom tweaking this, adjusting that, until at last the finished work was pretty much the story we have all come to know and to love, of Santa, Saint Nick, Sinterklaas, Kris Kringle, each to his own, all over the world. Tialo insisted that there should be a real pole stuck in the ice and snow up there with a sign that says North Pole. And Wisdom agreed to that, even though she thought to herself, that's ridiculous. But in hindsight, it was a nice touch. The following day, Wisdom herself approached the throne of God with the whole kit and caboodle. When he read it, the Almighty laughed out loud, Ho, ho, ho! And the thunder rumbled down below on earth. So it's a go, then? asked Wisdom, slyly. Little Tiala standing cautiously beside her. I don't see why not, replied the Ancient of Days, and so angels were dispatched to whisper the message throughout the world. And that's pretty much the way it went. Little Tialo, the cherub, received a plaque for it, which he proudly hung on the wall of his tiny home up there in heaven. It reads, quote, To Tialo Tiene Titanius, unquote, which is translated, Of the Father of Titans, smallest. And, quote, For meritorious service, unquote. Sophia Wisdom returned to her throne, some went back up with her appointments, but for her, that is normal. Eventually, storytellers all over the world got a hold of it and added their embellishments. Hollywood still pumps out movie after movie about it, but they can never come as close to the point of it as when a real person tells it to a wide-eyed child on Christmas Eve. And to my knowledge... In all the centuries ever since, no evil has ever come of it. The end. Yeah, how about that Christmas carol? <laughs> Not quite ready for prime time. A very Merry Christmas. Do do some of your Christmas shopping on my website. Get yourself a copy of The Founding of the North Pole, which recenters Jesus as the reason for 
Christmas. And I'll read the, uh, the note that is attached. If you get one of the books, it has a note. It says, this storybook and its text have been designed to be read aloud on Christmas Eve, providing background and context. Aimed primarily at Christians, it also provides a superior commentary for the Christmas season, which exceeds the usual commerciality that has enveloped that holiday, causing the rest of the world to hold that sacred holiday or holy day in contempt, and perhaps rightly so. So get yourself a copy, join the liberation of Christmas back to Christ, <laughs> where it belongs. Yes, I'm the author. Visit my website. It's flashed right up there on the screen. Your ebook copy is $9.99. If we get enough pre-orders for $24.99, we'll create a hard copy book. I'll hire an illustrator and we'll, we'll create a, a really, really spangled up Christmas version for next year. Until then, God bless.